most of us are looking for passive income and uh, I want to speak to us who are all looking for passive income to say that at the beginning of passive income someone needs to do the work and in today's video my good friends I am going to be looking at a project of that we looked into last week and if you haven't had a look at uh, that video I suggest that maybe before you actually start looking in today's video maybe go back and look into that video it's a continuation it's a basically a property that we saw lots of lots of problems that I'm going to give you right now just as a summary and uh, but I had a detailed jump in into all of those problems in the previous video from the last video that we did and in today's video we're going to focus on whether the last question that we asked ourselves was it a good deal is it a good deal should we go ahead with it and I'm going to show you what I have done on this project so far in my books since we started counting and um, we had long started doing real estate when we started doing the county and some properties had sold some properties had bought uh, but in the student accommodation this year we call it project 44 uh, and basically project 44 is a, is a project that had many 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 issues that we had uh, but uh, within those issues I'm going to give you now well some of the things that we said were problems was that the current landlord who owns this property uh, basically was outstanding eight months in in payments so there's a bank that has funded this pro property and they're eight months uh, behind maintenance we saw on the video that there was nothing um, gas tanks it was pretty small and yet there were so many students that are on the place so how was this being worked around and apparently apparently there was supposed to be around about 20 students on there and uh, in the last uh, slot we only saw around about eight students and we also identified that the zoning of the property was not correct some of you don't know what zoning is it's basically the land use of a property but we have done many videos that are right here on the TJ tribe that can help you to understand what zoning I worked with my good friend Dumisane who is a town planner and you can jump on to that on one of the playlists that we have here on top of that we also realized that at the time we didn't know what was the accreditation like is there accreditation or is it not uh, and uh, we have done some more digging into that so today's video is going to be very interesting right because I'm going to be sharing with you all of these things on where we are at the moment and is it a good deal did I decide to take on the project or not uh, that's something that we are going to be sharing right at the end of the video and uh, there was a partner who wanted to check out this I'm just all of the problems that I'm sharing with you and over and above that the plans does the property has plans uh, electrical is it in place is it not uh, the electrical fence we saw it's one of the requirements actually and over and above that the last thing is furniture I took in 10 of the big problems that I saw starting from zero if you'll be writing down you can see that they are 11 actually and um, uh, with that I am going to give you what I think because I did see a little bit of opportunities here the which we did share and we say that the opportunity that I hear is that the property is 500 meters away from the university and the structure is sound the funding with the bank is in place and obviously yours I I'm well knowledgeable in terms of run turning around properties over and above that uh, also I've been in the property for a long time so when I see an opportunity I see a good opportunity I got the my eyes have been trained I've just been doing so many of these over the years and um, it's in a good area it's in a very good area so did I take this opportunity or not well hang ten my good friends I am going to tell you now potentially some of the things that we've done actually hold on let's do the numbers of this property the owner of the property wanted to sell this property at two million and so they came to me and I looked into it and I said maybe it's a good deal let's dive into it we started unearthing all of these things we saw there's so many things that were wrong 
Um, but here is the deal. With a 2 million rand bond, and actually because there's an existing bond, the bond is slightly lowish. There's, uh, the current president is supposed to be paying 18,000 on the property. Um, and um, that's what they are basically outstanding 18,000 times 8 they are outstanding of that and this property is about to be re repossessed or whatever you want to call it um, and at this junction they're saying that there's around about 19 students I saw an opportunity of 22 students so let's just run the numbers to make sure that if we are to buy this property what does the return on this look like? We know we can pay 18,000. We know all the expenses that are supposed to be pay, getting paid. So I want to weigh out if I'm to solve for these problems. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? And at the end of the tunnel, is it next year? Is it two months time? Is it six months time? Hey, it's a turnaround strategy. Turnaround strategy, you can put time into it and say, if I put in my money in here, when will I start getting some fruits, right? Now, a lot of us, we want to get into these deals and then make money right now. But turnaround strategies sometimes take time. And um, you're going to see this. I've been working on this deal now for the last year and a half. Um, and it's beginning to show some fruits Ah, why am I saying that? Why am I saying that? Now you know that I took the deal. Okay, great. Now you know. I did take the deal. But hold on, hold on. Now that you know that, let's see what the deal brings us. There's around about 22 students that we can be on the property. Um, and for that reason, my good friends, let's go into the numbers. And uh, we do know that we do have expenses. On this property of 22 students with this year's income, a bed is 4,100 and we can accommodate 16. There's 16 rooms there on the property uh, that we did a walkthrough on and 16 of those rooms are single rooms. So I can bank 4,100. That gives me a total of 65,600. By the way, next year, there might be an increment in here, but I'm not looking into that because I'm working with this year's numbers. Above that, I've got run about six additional students, or should I say three rooms that can take in doubles. And uh, they are going to bill me again on 4,100 on the double. And because this is a non-metro area, and I am now banking a whooping 108. A whooping 108, right? Now, having said that, I then looked at the current, the current landlord, the person who owns this deal, they bought it into a company and they already are on 12% with the bank. And by the way, they're 18,000 times eight. They haven't paid the bond. We're talking to problem number one here. That's what we're solving for. Eight months, they haven't paid for the bond. So basically, if we are to do an 8 times 18, how much is that? That is what we need to certify the bank right now and say, can we still continue with the property? The bank runs 144,000. It's a big amount of money that I'm saying, do I have this 144,000 if I'm to jump into this deal with this person without even looking at all the other costs, right? We're just looking at how I was thinking about it. Uh, for me to identify that this is a good project. We already know, I said it's a good project, but the thinking process behind it, that's what we're going to be doing here. Now, coming back again to the numbers, we have expenses, and all of those expenses come up to around about 33900 I think it is, if you're to add up all the way from the rates and taxes, the maintenance, and then I give this property to a property manager to manage for me, who specialize in student accommodation, and bingo, that's my guys at my student house, right? Now, now that I know all of this, I can get a rental income, passive income, passive income, passive income, passive income. But I need to do some work, right? 
So this 169% that we're talking about here, which is a return on investment, where is it coming from? I had a look at my top 10 issues and I said to myself, well, what are the things that I need to fix here? And I got to a number of just below 500,000 and that's around about 400,000 that I took in the contingency. I put in another 100,000, but 400,000 is exactly the amount of money that I put in. So 400,000, if I'm to be able to maybe come into this deal with this person, I can see that they are suffering because of what's happening and I can come on board and I can be maybe their partner with all my expertise that I have and we can discuss on how best we can work around this deal. Uh, is it a good deal? And I realize it's actually a good deal. The numbers are showing us, my good friends, a return on my money, if I'm to put in 400000 here, is 170%. 170%. Why wouldn't I not do this deal? But anyways, this is not a fly-by-night. It's not just an opportunity that I'm coming in, I'm going out. I'm looking for passive income. So what am I going to do? There's other problems here that I need to fix out. Let us talk about, we have spoken about number one, the biggest problem. At this junction, my good friends, eight months behind. That's where we are at the moment. Big problem. Because if I jump into this deal, how best can I sort it out? I'm going to tell you how I did that. Solution number one that I put onto the table together with the bank and then the bank then agreed with me. I went to the bank and I said to the bank, can you guys make a deal with us? We are new management. We are taking over the business. This is who we are. Give them our profile and all of those things, experience. Hey, we've done many deals. We are Surprise, surprise. We are also with the same bank with them and they know me. Um, and uh, my results have been showing and basically the, the bank then says, look, we can entertain a 50% down payment on the 144 and the difference, we can work around it. So they restructured the deal. So there's options, my good friends. And I took on that and I said, okay, great. We are willing to take this one out. And what we also started doing was to start paying off this 144000 slowly we added up like another five grand on our uh, normal payment because we could afford there's a surprise at the end of this video that came in as a huge surprise for me like a huge surprise for me it's like a cave ball but it was a nice cave ball I, i'll tell you all about it and this is specifically around banking and uh, number two you'd have seen that maintenance on the property was non-existence uh, look at the swimming pool it was run down but guess what but we the solution that we did here is that because we normally take in students this product is student accommodation uh, you have seen in the newspapers what generally happen with students they come onto these properties some of them don't know how to swim and they come onto their property and um, they drown in the swimming pool so I decided I'm gonna take the swimming pool away uh, but obviously the way to do it is that you need to drill in the swimming pool so that the water can disappear. And bingo, my friends, those are the pictures that are showing you uh, some of the work that we have done already there uh, with the team. Uh, you can see there that the swimming pool is gone. Or should I say the water in the swimming pool is gone. And now what we now need to do is to fill up the rubble. On my next video that we're going to do, we're going to do a walkthrough again, showing you exactly uh, what the property looks like now. And you can see the before and then the after. And you can see, are we making passive income? Now, my good friends, I do this to show you that this can be done. Anybody can do it. Uh, it is not here for me to come and just flex, say, hey, I'm doing this, hey, I'm doing this. No. Uh, it is also for me to educate you, to say, look, this is what I'm doing. This is how I did it. Maybe you can do it in your own local area. And if you don't know how to do it, maybe you can reach out to us. We've got a school where we teach these things. But some of you, you might just learn as we go right now. Now, problem number three. Problem number three is that right at the bottom there, you see the gusting. There were supposed to be how many students on the property? Round about 20 when we were 
going into the notion 19 right and uh, whilst we're going to, into the notion of the uh, due diligence and uh, we actually then only found eight but of the eight they had a small gas or tank i mean you saw the small gas or tank that was there uh, and that was a when i took over the property that was like a quick win uh, uh, like it was like a quick win i didn't need to think about it all i did is we just went and bought a bigger tank and bingo there's a bigger tank there and the guys don't need to be calling us every other friday to say hey we've run out of gas hey we're, uh, we've run out of gas so we got a big tank and we bought a second big tank that's also now on the property uh, so that is amazing. So that problem is gone. The eight months problem is gone. The maintenance, we have done a whole lot of improvements on the maintenance. We will show you some pictures as well. And uh, basically now we are on the gas. The gas, we have sorted it out. So what else is missing? Well, we had, or we was told, or we found out in our due diligence that the property can accommodate 19 students. But we could only see eight students on the property. Now, what did we do to make sure that we get to 19? I looked at the property. I looked at where we were in the year. I said to my team, let's forget about having students this year. Let's focus on doing the right thing. Let's get the property back into compliance. Let's have the property uh, back into looking very beautiful. Uh, and let's also focus to make sure that the bank is on our side. Those are our top three things that we wanted to do, uh, including satisfying the eight customers that we've got on the property. So, the eight, the paying students, I only manage this whole financial year, eight students. So what's TJ? What's happening with all the other pro with all the other units? Nothing, nothing, literally nothing. It's a risk that I'm taking. And I'm busy uh, renovating some of them where we can do a weekend paint and things like that. Uh, so we're doing that work gradually, slowly as we go along. Obviously, the university, because we've got eight students, doesn't allow us to do many uh, heavy work. But these small things, we are doing it whilst we're going through into the year. It's a turnaround strategy. Okay. Now, the next thing that we saw was that is the zoning. The zoning was wrong. Uh, at the beginning of the video, the previous video that is, you did see that we spoke about zoning. And basically in the zoning space, um, for you to be doing student accommodation, it needs to be on the higher side of intensification. Anything plus three, four, you know, it's acceptable. And obviously having a special consent of running student accommodation, you need a town planner to help you with that. Now, when we looked into the paperwork, I then appointed a town planner, my good friend Dumisani, uh, who is a town planner. I reached out to him and I said, brother, please can you do some investigation on us on here? And bingo, he went out. Right, so you can see there, uh, that's Dumisani there with one of the videos that we were talking to. But actually, uh, I gave him the job and a town planner, you need to pay him. So we paid him to do the work and basically what he did here he took the documentation went to our local city uh, and in the local city he submitted a, an application for rezoning and my good friends you will not believe what happened oh lord oh, oh. you know when you do diligent do diligence sometimes you don't pick some of these things up right so I have budgeted for rezoning, um, let's just call it 100,000. Dumisani goes in with his team and the municipality says, wait, there is already another application in the process. We said, what? Another application in the process? What do you mean? When? So we asked the previous owners, guys, did you ever put in an application in the process? They said, no. We said, okay, when did you buy this property? Uh, we bought it in 2020. Okay, right. We asked the council, when was this application done? They gave us the time frame. And we said, okay. So which means that the previous, previous owner put in an application of rezoning. 
and we don't know what happened. Whatever what happened happened, and they got fed up and they sold the property, but they didn't tell my previous owner, who is now my partner, that they did an application at the town council. So the council then said to us, we cannot give you this information. We said, well, we are the landlord here. Yeah, there's our details. We had to give them all of our DNA samples. Um, I was, uh, for lack of giving them spam samples, you know, they asked for all of those things. But anyway, we gave them what they were looking for. And then eventually, they came right and then they said, look, these are the information that you are going to be getting. Uh, and the information basically was an application that was lodged with the previous, previous owner. And we then looked at this and we saw that there was another town planner. I asked Misani to reach out to that town planner. And that town planner said, look, I can finish off this job. I've been fighting with the previous, previous owner. And all I need is 9,000. Whoa! I had a budget. You remember I had a budget, right? My budget was 100,000. So me and Dumisani, because we understand each other, and besides understanding each other, a town planner needs to finish off his work. So the town planner now had to go and finish off his work. So yes, Dumisani kind of like lost out, but in the process, or in the, in the benefit of me going ahead, we have now started working with this new town planner. I don't know him. We did some due diligence behind him. He's got an office. He's a certified town planner. And... Uh, He's good. So now he is doing the rezoning for us. And basically we have now paid half of that 9000 And the paperwork is being resubmitted to the council. And the council has confirmed now directly to I. To say that this is now in progress. Because now we are the new landlord, right? And they told us that in the next four months we should be getting our reason. Boom! Boom! That's the part I would say. Bam! Bam! Yeah! Progress on the project. Surprise, surprise. But that's not the one that I was... You remember earlier when I said that there's a like a cave ball, like a surprise? It's not the one. It's coming. Ne? Hang ten. This video is a good video for us today. So, rezoning, we fixed that out. And it was a good surprise. We didn't anticipate it. We're looking at a horizon of two years. And now we are looking at around about six months. Obviously, we are hoping that this town planner is going to perform. We don't know him. I've never worked with him. But I'm getting the trust from his documentation. He's an elderly guy. And I actually like to work with the elderly guy. I got a bias. I got a bias to experience. Yeah, it's just me, you know. But anyways, let's go on to the next problems. Remember, we've got 10 problems that we're fixing here, right? As we turn around the property and we're getting some good surprises. What is the other thing that we spoke about? Accreditation, right? In the office of my student house, you might be wondering who is my student house. It is my partners that uh, run my student houses across many uh, cities. Uh, and uh, within these cities, Porchestrom, they run through my student house there. They run student accommodation. In Port Elizabeth, now called... Yeah, you know that word, ne? I need to practice for it. Whilst I'm on camera, I can like say it nicely, but... Yeah, I was, you see, I was trying to, but let's just stick with Port Elizabeth now. I'll come back to it when I know how, to, when I practice how to, to say it. Um, the other day, we had, a, we had a project in Quebec, yeah? We are there, you go, I said it! Yeah, okay, that's the only time I'm going to say it. Um, I wonder what it means, actually. Yeah, maybe you guys can tell us, you know... But anyways, uh, so we've got uh, offices in Pochestrum, uh, offices in Cape Town, offices in Quebeja, uh, offices in Bloemfontein, whoop, whoop. So these are the areas where my student house um, manage other people's properties. So I reached out to them and I said, guys, we've got a problem here. I'm taking over this property and um, is it accredited? Is it not? Right? And, you know, the previous landlord is telling me that they've done everything by the books, send it, but they haven't been approved. Uh, and obviously, my student house, they've got an accreditation team, and they got us, they asked for the relative document, relevant documentation, 
and all the documentation went through to my student house and in three weeks time my student house came through with a status right a status basically means that somebody at the accreditation office had agreed or confirmed with them that these applications are in the process and everything is all right and they're being vetted and uh, we then say to them hey actually somebody did come through to the property and uh, the vetting physically happened how can it work out and bingo what happened was exactly two weeks after that so basically around about let's call it six to eight weeks the accreditation was in place again another wonderful celebration boom 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 i was not expecting for these eight students to be accredited but we're just basically getting 4,800 on the eight students. So there's some money coming in. And not so long ago, we received our first payment from them starting from February at the beginning of the year. What a nice surprise. Oh, so that money, I'll tell you what I did with that money in the next video. Now, so we're talking about accreditation. So now we are accredited. And accreditation works in a space of three, every three years. Uh, they accredited you but i am going to go back for accreditation next year once we are finished with all the renos and so, things like that because i'm not happy with the current accreditation that we've got uh because obviously the property wasn't looking the je ne sais quoi that we are looking for uh that we normally give to all of our students but i am grateful that we are accredited and we're banking some money on this property so well done well done well done to all the other uh, parties at my student house that were able um, to uh, give us this accreditation. Now, uh, the, how do we do uh, CLEPS again uh, when we're doing it online? It's like this, ne? I've seen people doing that on Zoom. I'm like, what are you doing? But anyway, here I am. I'm doing it already. Sorry, guys. Okay. Maybe it's just my excitement of this project. Let's go on to the next project. The other problem that we had was the uh, partner who had checked out problem number the partner that he checked out so what did i do with the partner that checked out so i literally bought out remember there was two uh, partners here um and the first partner he had already checked out and the other one was on the fence so when i started seeing this project and doing my due diligence i did realize that it's a good opportunity i want in so I persuaded the person who actually had the credit on their name and I said to them, this is what I'm seeing. And they said to me, yes, you are on the money. But the problem is I don't have money to fix all these things. And I said, don't worry, I've got the money. And I put in some money with, uh, I put in some money uh, with one or two other partners together. And basically we now owned this property together and we paid this other partner out and now we've got this 400 that we're saying is going to turn around the property and together now we're going to be earning passive income together that's how i fixed the problem of the partnership so meaning that i didn't buy the property itself it's in a company so i become a I became a shareholder in the business and i did a, a acquisition of shareholding i notified the bank to say there's a new shareholders on board and we notified to say, look, this is who we are. And there's a whole process that you need to follow when you are buying this new company. And uh, share certificates and all of those things was done. So we're good to go. The other person is gone. And we had to do some due diligence around accounting, around taxes. But nonetheless, they are done. Um, how then now do we go ahead? So that was problem number six that we sorted out problem i don't know whatever number next number it is so that was a problem of the partnership the other problem is that the plans doom doom the plans it's also a problem we don't know whether they are updated or not but i can see from what we have on the plans versus what we have on the building the two are not together right there's a one or two discrepancies that are there i'm not comfortable with and we then after we spoke to our town planner uh, in the town planning office, we also have an architect and we said we want to correct this. How best can we do this? And they said to us, look, let's wait for the reasoning to be done. We're going to go in 
and we will change the plans and actually we can actually do more on it so we do one submission a little bit later so i'm happy with that and we're going to go ahead with that and uh, so that still gives me with the plans the plans are not like in the right space at the moment um for that particular there's a small part of the building that i'm not like so happy it's not representing what it should be correctly but i'm working on that so it's a gray area besides it, besides it being a gray area uh we know what it is uh we understand the risk and we've got a mitigation with it and we've got a professional who's helping us with it so i'm comfortable with the risk does it make sense good and we are fixing it right okay good stuff now problem of the electrical right the electrical is oof there are wires everywhere and things like that and my good friends we have fixed all of that we brought in an electrician and he rewired the building and uh, within that we've got new cocs to say that the building is certified electric electricity is running smooth smooth but over and above that we also then put outside lights because at one point whoa on this electricity issue whoa, 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 something happened so whilst we were looking at the electricity thing we then realized that on the actual property the municipality bill is fairly low for all the other properties that we run that is and i looked at the electricity and i realized it was pretty low like almost nothing so we requested for like two year statement of the council uh and at the time the council then you know was doing a cleanup in the area and bingo we had no lights and i was like what happened and my team then reached out to the cancer and then they said there was a connection error it's a connection error okay what, what is a connection error well you were connected illegally whoa 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 wait wait so i asked my previous uh landlord uh who's now my partner i said dude did you guys do this and she said no uh you know he said no like i i don't know anything about that and he said okay but You've owned this property for how long? And did you ever pay for electricity? They're like, um, no, we, but we've always paid our rates and taxes. I said, okay. So it looks like the previous, previous guy had done some stuff on this property. Some stuff. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of years later on, it came to bite us because we were actually doing the right thing. We're trying to connect and we're trying to get all our electrical in place. And bingo, we discovered this and at the same time the council comes up and disconnects us so actually my friends we had to pay a penalty and oof, none the case one week with no electricity and over and above that we now have the right meter installed we now know the process at the council we actually now have proper lights that are certified in our house and we also now have solar in the house right so it's an amazing thing um, uh, the progress that's happening on here uh, and then I think we've got two more problems to go through as I land the plane and those two problems again the one of them is centered around electricity but this is the electrical fence I haven't touched that uh, like it's not on my top list to sort out right now. It's probably going to do, uh, we're probably going to do that exactly when the accreditation is about to happen. Yeah, we've got a quotation, but I don't have the money right now. It's not part of the budget at the moment. It's not part of the 400. We're still fixing all of these other problems. What about the last thing? Furniture, furniture. Okay, good. So what we did was uh, we looked at the furniture that was on the property and we said, let's keep the cream of the crop of the furniture and the other stuff let's just assume we don't have it and we're going to buy new stuff and bingo that's how it's going to work so my good friends this is a lot of work this takes dedication 
I don't know how many times I have driven to this property. I don't know how many meetings I've had on this property. And we're not making money. We're still in the first financial year where we are only paying, we were only getting uh, paid on the eight students on 4,100. Um, by the way, which we're not expecting. And 4,800 is basically just 32,000 a month. So it's, we're just breaking even at this moment. But this video is about, are we making money? And this video is about turning around, uh, turn around strategy. We are in the middle of the turnaround strategy. We have identified the problems. We've started solving for the problems. I'm, I'm in the deal now. We've put in some cash. And in the following coming year, we are going to be now making some good mula on it. And my good friends, that is good passive income. Good passive income. That's how you make it, right? So in case you've been wondering, how do you make passive income? Somebody, somewhere, someone needs to sacrifice and do the work at the beginning. I have not seen any passive income that does not come with that recipe. At the beginning, someone needs to do some work, take some sacrifice, and then bingo, the passive income then generates. Well, today's video. I'm hoping that we've all learned something. Let me know in the comments if I've made a call or the right call. Financially, I think I have 22 students for the next financial year. 400 spent right now. I think it's good. I really think it's good. I did say there's a curveball, right? Who who is ready for the curveball? Drum roll, drum roll. Right. Boom, boom. So whilst I was working on this deal, I then realized that in this company that we are talking about, that we are restructuring, there's another property. <laughs> Woo, you can hear my evil love, ne? Or should I say, <laughs> there's another property, also another student accommodation, with 25 students in it. No, TJ Line, 26 students in it. And I was like, wait, so is this running properly than this one? And I realized the other one. It has its own small problems, but this one's got a bigger problems. But it's also behind, around about four to six months, I think. And I got to know this person, now my partner, to buy one property from them. And in due diligence, I am now buying two properties. And within these two properties, I am buying at a shareholder level. I am chasing initially one property. And this one property, the value of it, if turned around, the one that we were talking about all along, is a 5 million rand valuation. I'm buying it for less than a million rand. But there's another property, also in the same business, also working great, but with the minor problems. This first one, the university where it is, the income is slower. So they are paying their first payment, came out like in August. But the other one, their first payment is round about in March. So actually, when I looked at these two deals together, the income, my good friends, also the valuation on that one is also on 5 million. So I'm like going into a business that's 10 million worth, and I'm putting in just below a bar. 
And if I get these two correctly, the first one I'm already having an income on 56,000 because we spoke about it, right? And the other one is in a similar vibes. TJ, you have landed on a golden goose. Passive income for days. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom. Boom, boom, my good friends. However, I want to stress this out. I have worked tirelessly to get this right for the last year and a half. My team have supported me tirelessly to get it right. This is a two to three year turnaround strategy. We are only in half the year in it. A year and a half. And this is what it takes. So as I land the plane, sometimes we see these deals and we think that they are great for us, but we make bubbles in it. Or sometimes we don't, we see the deals and we're like, nah, that's not for me. And a guy like me can come in with a different lens and you can be able to spot the opportunity and dig the gold to create the golden goose. That's what is required. Creativity, tenacity, resilience will give us the passive income for generations to come. Let me know what you think of this deal of where we are at the moment in our next video on project based on project 44. I am going to show you what that project looks like. And potentially, if I can travel to the other town in good time for that video, I'm going to show you what it's all about. So my good friends, Project 44 has now turned not just into one project, but two projects into one company. This project has turned out into me buying a company instead of one property. It's a good deal. Is it? I don't know. You let me know. It is I, your boy, TJ. We will see each other on the next video right here on the TJ Tribe. Boom, boom.